have to stop this invasion. Because again, I emphasize, if we don't, then when that candidate with tangibles come along, we're not going to have enough of our votes to outnumber theirs. And they're never going to vote for something that's going to help us. And we will have, we will be in a situation from which there is no return. And you'll have yourself to blame for sitting there and letting it happen. And ADOS dude, ADOS dude, there was an ADOS dude named Bill something. Bill the icon. Right. We are all in dirty laundry. Well, but I wanted to put to um, Brother Greg, who, who has experience now <clears throat> as a candidate. Um, and I believe you said this was your actual first time voting. Um, but he ran as a Democrat. What, what would be your perspective? Um, having ran as a Democrat, living in a Democratic stronghold um, of James Clyburn, um, how do you think the idea of, of, of Black Democrats um, in seeking tangibles, possibly, you know, switching or, or reaching across the aisle and, and finding Republican candidates who we might be able to support. What would you know? What would be your perspective on how would that play with the people? Well, I've always said it has to be policy, always party, never. So I'm not looking at this as some vote Republican strategy or vote against the Democrats strategy. I'm looking at this as what is the policy strategy, and right now. We are under invasion. Five million illegals have entered this nation. And those five million illegals are probably going to have children that are going to have the right to vote. We've already seen like what's happening in California. These Latinos and Hispanics, however they choose to identify, are just as, if not more, anti-Black than white Americans who are anti-Black that have been here for generations. We heard that recording in California. It sounded like something you were here, right here in the deep South with a bunch of good old boys, anti-Black, white American bigots planning to disenfranchise Black Americans. I don't feel we should be reaching across the aisle to do nothing. The Republicans need to be reaching across the aisle to us. However, we are in a battle. And if I'm in a battle for my life, and even more so for the survival of my people, I'm going to use any weapon at my disposal to defeat my enemy. Illegal immigration is an enemy. It's a big threat. If we had reparationist candidates on the ballot, a true reparationist candidate means, in my mind, not just a person who knows that this nation, the federal government, needs to pay us that debt, but they also recognize that these illegal immigrants are a huge threat to us. We will go from being second class, third class, fourth class to fifth class. We will be put in a position of social political extinction. Okay? If you are a reparationist candidate, you should be not just for closing the borders. I hate when we say closed border candidates. I don't just want you to close the borders. I want you to line up every single illegal immigrant in this nation and throw them back over the border. Whether that border is the southern border, the northern border, back to Asia, back to Africa, back to Europe, the Caribbean, wherever it may be, they need to go. I also feel we need to look at this retrospectively. If you are in this country illegally and you had a child, that child should not be getting birthright citizenship. That was something done for the descendants of American slaves, people of my lineage. It is an insult for these people to come here, be anti-Black American, as many of them are, but then use the civil rights that our people bled, fought, and died for to buy homes, to get jobs, which is technically illegal, and to then to get birthright citizenship for their children who will then turn around and firebomb Black American households like they are doing in California. So what I'm saying, I'm not going to tell anyone vote for Republicans flat or vote against Democrats flat. I will say that in this election, if there is a candidate who is for putting every single last illegal out of here, give that candidate your vote just for that. You can assume that just because someone is a Republican, that they are for stopping legal immigration. That's what they will tell you. But then you go to their mansions and you will see illegal immigrants working there. The same way you can assume that every Democrat 
is for open borders. There are some Democrats who are for closing the borders, who are for putting out these illegal immigrants, okay? So you have to examine the policy. This is not about party. This is all about policy. But for us, descendants of American slaves, freemen, this is about our survival. And I would vote for a reparationist candidate if they were on the ballot. I tried to get on the ballot here in South Carolina. I'm running again. Tamara Shirley Johnson tried to get on the ballot in Georgia. I am not so familiar with her stance on illegal immigration. William Somerville tried to California. There were some reparationist candidates, but y'all already know where I stood. Line up every single illegal immigrant and put them out, okay? And put that wall on the border and if need be, militarize it. That's my attitude when it comes to illegal immigration. However, we don't have reparationist candidates that I know of that are running for office. So we need to do the next best thing. This is not about the lesser of two evils. I'm not gonna tell my people, choose between the lesser of two evils. This is about us defeating a great evil, and that is illegal immigration. So we need to vote for those candidates that are pro-deportation, immediate, show no mercy, and for closing down the borders. If anyone has a problem, because I know we got people going around here saying no tangibles, no vote. Those people are saying that because they think that's what Tariq Nasheed wants to hear. Tariq Nasheed never just said no tangibles, no vote. This is a man who has considered two years ago, and he's now doing it again, running for office. So obviously he realizes that you have to do more than just say no tangibles, no vote. We have to become the candidates that are offering those tangibles. But if we don't stop illegal immigration, we will not have enough votes to get the tangibles when they come. They need to get out of here. And anyone that has an opportunity to put someone in office that will deport these illegals whose policy and historical record shows they will do that, you are sitting back allowing us to be invaded and you are diluting our voting power. And that cannot be. And if anyone says, well, we can't vote people while offering tangibles, I would say we would have had people offering tangibles had you run and you've been on the ballot offering those tangibles or at least had tried. So that's where I stand with this situation here. But let me say something too. We need to be very, very clear about something. I'm not advocating for my people to go and vote for the Republicans so we can go from voting for one party that in 60 years did nothing to significantly and specifically benefit us. But they sent billions to Ukraine, still doing it. They're housing and feeding and clothing their jobs to Afghani refugees. White Americans during this time were still benefiting from the land they got via the Homestead Act and the GI bills and the labor union bills. They're trying to give illegal immigrants, not just citizenship, but underneath the New Deal for New Americans, they will be giving them housing, educational resources, medical resources, business resources. They've given people exposed to radiation reparations, the Iranian hostages reparations, people in Guam reparations, Every group, Native Americans have now received historical levels of funding. Asian Americans are getting billions of dollars. Every group is getting something except for us, and yet this is a party that would not exist without us. I refuse to tell just go to the Republicans and get treated the same. So I want to make that very clear. If a Republican wants that vote, they're going to do more than just come and ask for it. If you are just going to come and ask me to vote for you, but you don't have any specific policies for my people, to benefit my people, you might as well not even bother asking because the answer is going to be no. So they too have to come with specific policies. But for this situation that we are in, we need to get these illegals out of here. Even in South Carolina, which is 30% black, we have a very small percentage of immigrants. But we have the fastest growing Hispanic Latino population in the country. I'll be damned if my damn state ends up looking like that, that place over there, California, I will be damned. But that's what's gonna happen if we just sit back and say no tangibles, no vote, because we want to be politically lazy. It's easy to simply not vote. How about make your vote count? Or even better, how about run for office and be the candidate for whom we can vote? How about run for office and offer us those tangibles we need? But until then, we have to stop this invasion. Because again, I emphasize, 
If we don't, then when that candidate with tangibles come along, we're not going to have enough of our votes to outnumber theirs. And they're never going to vote for something that's going to help us. And we will have we will be in a situation from which there is no return. And you'll have yourself to blame for sitting there and letting it happen.